Next problem is from chapter 13, number 4. It says, a dike in Holland springs a leak through a hole of area 1 square centimeter. So the area is 1 square centimeter. Kind of tiny, it's about a sixth of a square inch. And it goes on at a depth of 2 meters below the water surface. So h equals 2 meters. h or d. How much force must the boy apply to the hole with his thumb to stop the leak? And um, the story originates actually from an American um, novel that is called Hans Brinka or the Silver Skates. And it's set in Holland. And that a boy saves the town by pushing his thumb into this hole holding the Atlantic Ocean back and so the question is is that actual possible could he do it well let's see what the pressure is pressure of course is weight density times depth so we have 9800 newtons per cubic meter is the weight density and we have a depth of 2 meters so we come up with 19,600 or 20 th round at 20,000 pascals now the force equals pressure times area because pressure equals force divided by area so we have 20,000 pascals but that's in base units so therefore the area also have to be in base units and it's one square centimeters converted to um, meters means that we would have to divide by a hundred centimeter per meter and because it's square centimeters we have to do that twice so squared and when we do that we come up 20,000 divided by 100 and again divided by 100 and we come up with just 2 with the units being pascals times square meters which is newtons. 2 newtons which we could convert if we wanted to to pounds comes out to roughly 0.5 pounds and that's oops, all the force that the boy has to exert and so therefore yes you can easily do it. The next problem is chapter 13 problem 6 which says when a 2 kilogram or uh, 2.0 kilogram object is suspended in water it masses and masses is in quotes 1.5 kilograms what is the density of the object? So the mass is 2.0 kilograms and now it says that the apparent mass that's why they put um, that in quotes is 1.5 kilograms because this is really not the true mass um, but it's the weight minus um, the buoyant force and then the equivalent mass to that. So as the object is um, submerged in water, the scale reads only 1.5 kilograms. Well, the way this can be done is to say that since it is submerged in water, it displaces a certain amount of water. Well, how much? Well, apparently the buoyant force is um, equivalent to 0.5 kilograms. Actually, it's 5 newtons. Respectively, the um, water that is being pushed out has a mass that is 5.5 kilograms so water mass is 0.5 kilograms with water having density of 1 kilogram per liter or 1 gram per cubic centimeter then the volume of water being pushed out is also 0.5 in this case liters and because the object is submerged that means now that an equal amount of water is being displaced so V equals 0.5 liters 
and therefore the density is going to be the mass, the true mass of the object 2.0 kilograms divided by its volume of 0.5 liters which comes out to 4 kilograms per liter or 4 that's an equal sign 4 grams per cubic centimeters next problem is chapter 13 number 7 And it says, an ice cube measures 10 centimeters on a side and floats in water. One centimeter extends above water level. If you shaved off the one centimeter part, how many centimeters of the remaining ice would extend above water level? I just took a picture here of some icebergs in Portage Glacier in Alaska. And if we have one centimeter above water of a 10 centimeter ice cube, that means that 9 centimeters is below the water surface. In any case, no matter what you do, um, is you have 10 percent is above the water and 90 percent below the water. And if you shave one centimeter off, now you have a total of 9 centimeters and you still have 10 percent above or 0.9 centimeters and 90 percent below 8.1 centimeters and that's due to the density of ice which is 0.9 grams per cubic centimeters and that tells us that always 90 percent is below the water 10 percent above water the next problem is chapter 13 number 10 and it says in the hydraulic piston shown in the sketch the small piston has a diameter of 2 centimeters the larger piston has a diameter of 6 centimeters how much more force can the larger piston exert compared with the force applied to the smaller piston that's Pascal's principle and as the areas are is proportional to the force on Pascal's principle if we have a certain force on a small area for example 10 newtons and I'm just making this up here um, for an area of pi times r which is 1 centimeters squared and now we look at how much force we would get for an area of pi times 3 centimeters squared and notice that the diameter is 3 times as much but the area comes out to be 9 times as much because the radius is being squared and so we come up with 90 newtons and I should have written a newton there as well so the answer is 9 times